Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how to get more organic search traffic without any new backlinks. Let's jump right in. So before we get started, make sure you subscribe to this channel because you'll get notified when I publish new videos just like this one. So the SEO industry is obsessed with backlinks and link building. Just go to any popular SEO blog, forum, or community where SEOs geek out. It's almost always the topic of discussion. And that's because backlinks are fundamental for ranking well in Google because of the original page rank algorithm. And backlinks are literally the basis for Google's algorithm. But let's imagine we're living in a world where backlinks don't matter at all. How would you do SEO? You would need to tap into the lost art of optimization. Now let's not forget what SEO stands for, search engine optimization. SEO is optimizing a website for search engines, not optimizing for backlinks. Backlinks only matter because Google is the biggest search engine and because they matter to their algorithm. Don't forget that. Now, before we go any further, let's define what optimize actually means. According to Merriam-Webster's dictionary, the definition of optimize is to make as perfect, effective, or functional as possible. But for me, I think the right definition of optimize for an SEO should be to make as perfect as possible. Perfection is the standard that we should be trying to reach when it comes to optimizing website for organic search performance. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you in this video. I'm going to pretend that links don't matter, and I'm going to show you some methods for optimizing your website better than your competitors. <laughs> So let's jump right in. So there are five categories you need to optimize your website for. Number one, keywords. Number two, site architecture. Number three, content. Number four, UI UX. And number five, technical. In this particular video, I'm going to focus on site architecture and content. Let's start with site architecture. Now, site architecture is a lead domino for SEO performance because it impacts so many other facets of the process. For example, a well-designed site architecture can help search engine crawlers navigate through your site better, which leads to better indexation. Also, an effective site architecture can drive link equity to your most important pages, which will help them perform better in organic search. So how you attack structuring your site architecture will depend on the type of website you have. I'm also going to assume you already have a large list of keywords you wanna tackle. And if you don't, watch my video on this channel about keyword research. So for this example, I'm going to pretend that I have an e-commerce website that sells coffee. So the first thing you need to do is map out the site architecture. So now let me show you how I go about actually mapping these pages on the website and for the site architecture. Okay, so I'm on my computer and now what I wanna do is I wanna show you how I would map out the site architecture for a coffee business. So I know this might look super overwhelming, but just bear with me and it will all make sense. So this of course is not a real business, it's just a mock business because I wanted to show you how I would go about and my thought process when mapping out a particular site architecture. So I would probably target the homepage uh, with the keywords buy coffee or coffee subscription. And these are like real keywords that I actually went and found. So then what we wanna do from the homepage is we wanna to link to the products page. And this is basically going to be the hub for driving all the link equity and authority to our most important pages. So this would likely be in the navigation. And what you would do is the products page would then link to your category pages. So these are light roast coffees, medium roast coffees and dark roast coffees. And so in this case, you'd probably have different coffee blends in each category. But in this case, I just did one blend per, per category. So now what you need to think about is what are the objective of these pages? So in this case, it's probably unlikely that this product page is going to be something that you're going to actually try to rank, but it's still a really important page for the overall architecture because it's going to be the hub for driving link equity and users to these important pages. So the products page will link to your category pages, which will of course have the products listed. And what you're trying to do is you're basically just trying to build authority to each of these pages without having to put them super deep into the architecture. So you'll see from the home page, the category pages are only one click from the home page, which is really, really good. And typically you don't want to go beyond three to four clicks, but I'll, I'll talk about that in a second when we get into best practices. But really what you're trying to do is keep this 
architecture as lean and um, not super deep. Now there is some nuance here that's pretty important. So it, it's a good idea to cross link as well. So you you may want to link from your light roast coffee category page to your medium roast and to your dark roast and have these all linking together because then you're going to continue to flow users to these pages. Most importantly, crawlers. <laughs> Google's crawlers will be able to get to these pages easier. So just making them as accessible as possible is really important. And then one thing that I love to do with e-com websites like this is to focus on a reverse silo method. So I don't have this set up in a traditional reverse silo, but this is still the same concept. And so really what it is, is we're building out content assets on the blog. And what we're doing is we're gonna be linking to the category page. We're gonna be linking to the product pages. I didn't link here, but we link it to the category pages and we'll be linking to these more important pages where we can actually drive sales. But really the big part of the reverse silo that makes it so powerful is that you're using your blog to build your site's authority. And really the goal with e-com is to just build massive, massive site authority because that will make ranking for your category pages and your product pages much easier. And really the fastest way and the most natural way to do that is through your blog content because it's much easier to acquire links to content-rich assets than it is to acquire links to a boring category page about medium roast coffee. So this is a much better strategy, but as you'll see here, I have backlinks hitting the homepage, I have backlinks hitting the product page, I have backlinks hitting the category page, backlinks hitting the product page, and most importantly, backlinks hitting the blog post. But I would say that the majority of your links, I'd say probably around 80% of your links should be going to these content rich assets on your blog. And this will help you build authority in a totally natural way. And most importantly, it's gonna help you do it really fast because people are just much more likely to link to valuable content assets. So this is how you map out a site architecture for an e-com business, but this really applies to any business. And in fact, I use the reverse silo method for any type of business. Doesn't matter whether it's an e-com business selling physical products or a local business that's trying to sell services. I always use this strategy because it's so incredibly powerful. And most importantly, it's natural. And I truly do believe that is the best way to build your site authority. So once you've mapped out your site architecture, you need to go through the process of optimizing it. So here are some general rules of thumb about building an effective site architecture. First thing you need to understand are votes. So just like external links, you should think of your internal links as votes for a page. The second thing you need to understand is coverage. Every page on your site should be accessible for crawlers unless intended otherwise. Number three is prioritization. Understand that all internal links on your site are valued differently. For example, internal links on your homepage and your site-wide menu are valued more than links in your footer, sidebar, or even within a blog post. Next thing you need to understand is depth. So all of your pages should be no more than three to four clicks deep. And this will ensure that your pages are getting crawled and indexed well. In general, the deeper a page is on your website, the less valuable it is to Google. Just remember, less clicks, more value, more clicks, less value. The next thing you need to understand is anchor text. So you should always use exact match anchor text with your internal links. Just be careful with site-wide navigational links because they can cause issues. And it's better to create a category page and then link to the other pages than to jam it into the menu. And so the main reason is because of anchor text over optimization. So if you have a thousand internal links for dark roast coffee, and then you acquire a hundred external links with that same anchor text, it could lead to over optimization. The next thing you understand are breadcrumbs. So if you have a large website, you may want to consider using breadcrumb schema because this will ensure proper coverage. The next thing you understand is a mega menu. So you can use a mega menu if you have a large website. And lastly, you need to make sure you have a sitemap. So now let me show you a couple different websites that have excellent site architectures and you can model them. So the first site architecture I want to show you is yelp.com. So if you ever want to learn how to build a really great site architecture, just study this website. It is one of the best site architectures you'll find and you can spend really all day analyzing their architecture, but you'll see a few things right away that the way that they structure their homepage is very deliberate. It's very smart and they are trying to drive link equity and authority to their most important
important pages. You'll see that they're really always trying to be as deliberate as possible about what goes on this homepage. And typically what's gonna happen is they really wanna isolate their most important pages on this homepage. So what I highly recommend you do is just go through their homepage and then go through their site and just act like you're a user, but also look at it from an SEO perspective. So we'll go up here and we'll start with the restaurant section. And then of course, Yelp is going to show you geo-targeted results. So you're gonna see restaurants that are near you based on your IP address. And that part's not as important, but what's important is the way that they structure these pages so that their most important pages are not super deep within the architecture. And so they can keep them very high up in the architecture and have very little clicks to get to the most important pages. So you can start to go through these and start to see that they really have structured this in a very intelligent way. And more importantly, when Google's crawlers go through the site, they're able to crawl these pages, they're able to index them, they're able to rank them appropriately because it is able to crawl their website so efficiently. So I highly recommend you model Yelp site architecture and just take an hour or two if you can and just go through their site and really analyze everything they're doing because you will really learn a lot. So the next big factor that you have to master if you want to rank without backlinks is content. So now you know how to structure your website. So let's tackle the content optimization component. First, let's define what content is. So content refers to any page that has words, images, videos, or et cetera on your website. That includes your homepage, category pages, product pages, and blog posts. And the reason I need to clarify this is because most people think of blog posts when I say content, but it really applies to every page on your website. So the first action you need to take before changing or creating any new content is to perform a content audit. And I do have an in-depth video on my channel showing you how to conduct a content audit step-by-step, step, and I'll have a link below this video. But there are a few objectives you're trying to achieve with a content audit. So you want to identify duplicate content, thin content, keyword dilution, which is similar to thin content, but it's essentially when you're targeting long tails that could have been targeted on a more comprehensive rich page. You also want to identify keyword cannibalization, which is when two pages are competing for the same keyword phrase. You also want to identify just generally low quality content, which is going to be content that doesn't add any unique value, is full of grammatical and spelling errors, has poor user experience, or all of the above. And you also want to identify poor on-page optimization by examining URLs, titles, meta descriptions, headings, and the content itself. So one question you might have is, how do you find these issues? Well, the best way is to use Screaming Frog as SEO Spider. So now you might be wondering, how do you go about actually fixing these content related issues? Well, the solutions are simple with most of these issues. For duplicate content, you'll need to go through and create unique content for each page. For thin content or low quality content, you can either improve the page by adding more unique quality content or consolidate it with another page or simply just let it 404 and let Google remove it from the index. For keyword cannibalization, consolidating the content is usually the best strategy. And then for pages with poor on page optimization, you need to optimize the pages better. Now there is some nuance that you need to consider if you decide to make any of these changes. If you consolidate pages or change URLs, make sure you have proper 301 redirects in place. So that is how you optimize your site architecture and content for SEO performance. These are the two most important facets of effective on-site SEO. So make sure you review this video multiple times and most importantly, act on what you've learned today. Even taking a small step forward is progress. So if you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to my channel because you'll get first access when I publish a new video just like this one. And also, if you have any questions whatsoever, please leave it below and I will respond. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.